And that state of consciousness that we wear, we see in the mirror. So if we look in the mirror and we don't like the outfit that we're wearing, what do we do? We change the outfit. We don't expect the mirror to show us a different outfit than the one that we're wearing. We expect the mirror to be a perfect reflection of ourselves. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Neville. I am your host, Josiah Brandt, and Daily Neville is all about breaking down the teachings of Neville Goddard, making them easy to understand, easy to digest, easy to apply in 20 minutes or less. Today, we are continuing with Neville's book titled, Your Faith is Your Fortune. Now, in the last episode titled, Who Am I?, we explored in detail the nature of unconditioned, faceless, formless awareness, which is living out and clothing itself in conceptions of itself. And we related these ideas to Neville's famous concept of state of being. In this episode, you're continuing with the next chapter, which is titled, I Am He, and we're going to dive right in. I am He. For if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sins. John 8, 24. Neville writes, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. This is a hard saying for those trained in the various systems of orthodox religion to accept, but there it stands. All things, good, bad, and indifferent, were made by God. God made man, manifestation, in his image, in his own image. In the likeness of God made he him. Apparently adding to this confusion, it is stated, and God saw that his creation was good. What are you going to do about this seeming anomaly? How is man going to correlate all things as good when that which he has taught denies this fact? Either the understanding of God is erroneous, or else there is something radically wrong with man's teaching. To the pure, all things are pure. This is another puzzling statement. All the good people, the pure people, the holy people, are the greatest prohibitionists. Couple the foregoing statement with this one. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus and you get an impassable barrier to the self-appointed judges of the world. Such statements mean nothing to the self-righteous judges blindly changing and destroying shadows. They continue in the firm belief that they are improving the world. Man, not knowing that his world is his individual consciousness outpictured, vainly strives to conform to the opinion of others rather than to conform to the one and only opinion existent, namely, his own judgment of himself. We're going to start there. This is a bold opening paragraph by Neville. He is basically pointing out these seemingly contrarian ideas portrayed in the scriptures. To the pure, all things are pure. But there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And also, God made manifestation in his own image and saw that it was good. And yet, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Neville takes these ideas and he relates them to the idea of these self-righteous judges who are imposing their own opinion, usually based in some sort of morality, about what is right and what is wrong. And as Neville says, these self-righteous judges, basically self-righteous because they are assuming that their perspective is the only perspective, or perhaps the correct perspective, these self-righteous judges are blindly changing and destroying shadows. Shadows of what? Shadows of their own self-consciousness pushed out, their own individualized consciousness pushed out, outpictured into the world. And man, not knowing that this is the case, and these judges certainly not knowing this is the case, vainly strives to conform to the opinion of others. You know, the world could be described at large, the paradigm of the world, as the blind 
leading and following other members of the blind. There really is this paradigm that appears to be happening of people assuming that everyone else has the answer. Everyone else is a source of authority or other people somewhere get it more than we get it. And while there's always the opportunity to learn from others, and in truth, all others are our teacher, we really need to take a moment to examine the source of our beliefs and where are we transferring our power. This idea of power is something we keep coming back to over and over again in these episodes of Daily Neville because it really is the key. Are you going to hold your own power or are you going to transfer it to someone else? And this is the idea of buying the pearl of great price. When you buy the pearl of great price, you are reassuming all of your power. You are reclaiming all of your power from external causation. You are saying it is only my awareness that is the cause of my life. It is only my state which is the cause of my life. And this can be scary. It can be scary. And a lot of people will shy away from the responsibility that comes with holding so much power. Because in truth, each and every one of us is infinitely powerful. And it is so much easier to play small and to deny that power than it is to assume responsibility, creative responsibility, and ownership of that power. So what Neville is saying here, he's challenging us to ask the question, are we fashioning or patterning our lives based on the opinions of others? And if so, are we aware that these opinions of others are just shadows and that in truth, the only opinion existent, the only judge existent is one's own self? Continuing with Neville's words. When Jesus discovered his consciousness to be this wonderful law of self-government, he declared, and now I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. He knew that consciousness was the only reality, that things objectified were nothing more than different states of consciousness. Jesus warned his followers to seek first the kingdom of heaven, the states of consciousness that would produce the thing desired and all things would be added to them. He also stated, I am the truth. He knew that man's consciousness was the truth, or the cause of all that man saw his world to be. Jesus realized that the world was made in the likeness of man. He knew that man saw his world to be what it was, because man was what he was. In short, man's conception of himself determines that which he sees his world to be. And this is that adage of wisdom that we are exploring here in Daily Neville of whatever you see when you look out at the world is yourself. It's actually, if you subscribe to this view of reality that Neville is holding out as a paradigm, there's actually nothing to see that isn't self. There's nothing that is not self, meaning that all you can ever see is yourself. All things are made by God, and God is consciousness. And without him, there is nothing made that is made. This is that consciousness first model of reality. Creation is judged good and very good because it is the perfect likeness of the consciousness which produced it. To be conscious of being one thing and then see yourself expressing something other than what you are conscious of being is a violation of the law of being. Therefore, it would not be good. The law of being is never broken. Man always sees himself expressing that which he is conscious of being. Be it good, bad, or indifferent, it is nevertheless a perfect likeness of his conception of himself. It is good and very good. This is a higher law than the manly, earthly law of morality. This is that higher 
place in which all things are judged as perfect because the law of reality is a perfect outpicturing of the state in which we occupy. And that is why it is judged as good and very good. It has nothing to do with the moral conscience of man or the preference of a man. There's no preference about, oh, I prefer things to be a different way. The law of consciousness dictates that they are the way they are because of the state of consciousness that we wear. And that state of consciousness that we wear, we see in the mirror. So if we look in the mirror and we don't like the outfit that we're wearing, what do we do? We change the outfit. We don't expect the mirror to show us a different outfit than the one that we're wearing. We expect the mirror to be a perfect reflection of ourselves. Otherwise, it's a faulty mirror and would be judged as not good. But a mirror that works does reflect back a perfect reflection of the image that is being reflected in it. And thus, it is judged as being good. Continuing with Neville's words. Not only are all things made by God, all things are made of God. All things are the offspring of God. God is one. Things or divisions are the projections of the one. God being one, he must command himself to be the seeming other for there is no other. The absolute cannot contain something within itself that is not itself. If it did, then it would not be absolute, the only one. Commands to be effective must be to oneself. I am that I am is the only effective command. I am the Lord, and beside me there is none else. You cannot command that which is not. As there is no other, you must command yourself to be that which you would have appear. Again, there is no other. You must command yourself to be that which you would have appear. Let me clarify what I mean by effective command. You do not repeat, like a parrot, the statement, I am that I am. Such vain repetition would be both stupid and fruitless. It is not the words that make it effective. It is the consciousness of being the thing which makes it effective. When you say, I am, you are declaring yourself to be. The word that in the statement, I am that I am, indicates that which you would be. The second I am in the quotation is the cry of victory. The second I am in the quotation, I am that I am, is the cry of victory. The whole drama takes place inwardly with or without the use of words. Be still and know that you are. This stillness is attained by observing the observer. Repeat quietly, but with feeling, I am, I am, until you have lost all consciousness of the world and know yourself just as being. Awareness, the knowing that you are, is almighty God, I am. After this is accomplished, define yourself as that which you desire to be, by feeling yourself to be the thing desired. I am that. This understanding that you are the thing desired will cause a thrill to course through your entire being. When the conviction is established and you really believe that you are that which you desired to be, then the second I am is uttered as a cry of victory. This mystical revelation of Moses can be seen as three distinct steps. I am. I am free. I really am. It does not matter what the appearances round about you be like. All things make way for the coming of the Lord. I am the Lord coming in the appearance of that which I am conscious of being. 
All the inhabitants of the earth cannot stay my coming or question my authority to be that which I am conscious that I am. These are the secrets of the power of the universe being laid bare open to be observed by each one of us in this moment. We have the opportunity, we have the ability, we have the power to declare what we are, to declare who we are, and none can stay our hand. None can get in the way of the coming of the Lord. None can oppose consciousness of being. No one can tell us that we are not. Not when we truly assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Not when we truly assert the power of I am. I am the light of the world, crystallizing into form the conception of myself. Consciousness is the eternal light, which crystallizes only through the medium of your conception of yourself. Change your conception of yourself, and you will automatically change the world in which you live. Do not try to change people. They are only messengers telling you who you are. Revalue yourself, and they will confirm that change. Revalue yourself, and they will confirm that change. Because signs follow, they do not precede. The world is reflecting back to you who you currently are. And the signs don't lead that. You lead that. You don't change the mirror. You change your face. And then the reflection in the mirror changes. I liked that, that analogy that came up earlier about the costume that we wear, the state of being that we wear, and viewing our reflection in the mirror of our daily reality. If we don't like what we see, the mirror isn't broken. The mirror is perfect. What is broken, potentially, is our conception of ourselves. And our conception of ourselves can be reimagined. We can reimagine our state of being. We can reimagine and revalue ourselves. This is our power. This is the law of choice, the law of free will, exercised at the level of I am. And that concludes this episode of Daily Neville, but come back tomorrow because we're going to go even deeper into this revelation of the law of being. Until then, imagine wisely, my friends, and I'll see you in the next. 